Hey everybody, and welcome back to Black Sad Under the Skin. Um, let's look around a little more. I'm, I'm not convinced I want to do the things that I might have to do. I might have to tell Sonya about Mary, and I don't want to. Um, hmm. Let's look at the noose again. I don't know why. Something just doesn't add up. Oh, another another card. Thank you, sir. What more do you want from me, game? Don't know how to get to uh, Yale's place. Can't go back to my place. Don't want to tell Sonya about Mary. The missing scarf seems to be an important piece, because they've mentioned it and it's written down in my book. I, mean, I don't want to go through Jake's locker again. Oh, there's another locker. There's more lockers. Who's this? This is Arthur Tucker. Who's Arthur Tucker? Um... Excuse me? Um... He's definitely a well. I won't say it, but you can make your make your inferences. Smells like paint. There's a stained towel in Arthur Tucker's locker. The Arctic nations strike again. Supremacists believe that God created Earth to be dominated exclusively by the white race. Leaders of the radical organization stand by Arthur Tucker, who is the dog that's kneeling, one of seven members arrested during the riots. Mr. Tucker, an amateur boxer, allegedly broke a police officer's jaw. Bastards. Now, why would, uh... If we know that Joey Dunn is, like, so cool about, you know, racial integration... Why would he even have this guy's... Unless he doesn't know uh, this man's racial leanings. You would think that he would just be like, Get out of here. I don't want to see you ever again. Get all your stuff out of your locker. I'm burning it in a fire. Um, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't want to have this man as part of the gym. The proud South. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, is that everything we can see? I can't move the camera, so... And then, uh... The clues... Well, yeah, let's do the deduction, I guess. There's a smudged racial slur painted on Yale's locker. Um, and... There's a stained towel in Arthur Tucker's locker. Oh, he wiped away his misspelling. Arthur Tucker painted the racial slur on Yale's locker. And that's what's this other locker? If I can, please, if I could, just turn around, please, Black Sad. Nothing in here. It's been oh, high barred open. That was Johnny something something. Um, what do you know about uh, this racist, Jake? Not all folks are as open-minded as Dunn. I happen to know who painted the lockers. Arthur Tucker. I knew it! I knew it was him, that bastard. I'm gonna whip the white out of him. Alright, you do you. <laughs> you do you, Jake. I mean, that doesn't get us any closer to, uh... To solving the case, though. I mean, maybe we could tell Sonya that one of her, uh, her members is a racist. I guess we cannot. Don't want to tell her about Mary. That's none of her business. Thanks. That's it for now. 
I get it. You don't like me. But there's something you need to know. I'm all ears. Pain is no excuse for bad manners. I'll grow on you. I'll find Yale. I don't like myself either. I'll find Yale. Rest assured, I'll find Bobby Yale. Duly noted, Mr. Blackside. You reaffirmed your professional reputation. All right, let's get out of here. Maybe now we can tell Smirnoff about uh, the racist locker. I think I have a new lead on the Dunn case. I mean... I'll tell you about the cleaning lady. Dunn and the Jim's cleaning lady were about to get married. Great. Call what's news. They'll know what to do with such an incredibly interesting piece of information. The combination on Dunn's safe was her birthday. He even gave her a ring. You know, your typical suicidal bliss. Okay, I'm still not convinced. But I might have something for you. All right, what you got? Give me some of that sweet, sweet info, please. Life is off and off key. Like a bad song. The notes come together but feel flat, unable to create anything resembling music. And yet, there are ways to string them together to create harmony. Ways that are not always entirely in our hands. You look tired, John. I was born tired. I'm a cat. You do too. I'm a cat. We're always tired. I can't help it. It's just the way we cats are. Well, I can't help but be glad to see you. Yep, I'm beat. I'm starving. Just got back from the annual police medical. Not only did I have to fast, but I also had to chug two enormous glasses of water. John. You all right? Uh, honestly, I've had better days. I've had better days. And I'll have them again, I hope. We both deserve to. The thing is, I'd love to help you out with this case, but I can't. You know I work for the state of New York. If I had any information, I couldn't share it with a private eye. I understood. Even if it was lying on top of this table. Uh, how do your kidneys process so much water? You should order something to eat. Yeah. You drank two huge glasses of water. How are your kidneys coping with that? Yeah, Maybe you you're need right. to go to the restaurant. Maybe I should uh, go to the. If you'll excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you, you need to go to the restroom and leave this confidential information sitting right here. Office of East Manhattan Medical Examiner Postmortem Report Preliminary Joseph Richard Dunn Case number Medical Team Deceased Joseph Richard Dunn Male Widower he is a lynx, dark brown in color, age 47, weight 163 pounds, height 5'5". Five five. Date of death approximately 7 p.m. on October 19, 19-something-something. Uh, date of death, violent asphyxia. 
form of death suicide. External findings. Violent asphyxia caused by rope around the neck. The neck presented four ring-shaped marks around the entire circumference caused by said rope. Hmm. Swollen and slightly scraped knuckles on the subject's right hand probably caused recent, recent trauma. So you had ring-shaped marks, but the ring-shaped marks uh, could be because of the... Um, if the chest expander was used to choke him, that might cause the ring-shaped marks. I don't think a rope would. Rope would just cause like one ligature mark, one big ligature mark, not four distinct ligature marks. No external internal autopsy was performed since external evidence seemed sufficiently conclusive. I think this is uh, I think this is flawed, sir. Now I feel even thinner. So do my kidneys. Thanks. Truth is, John, it all seemed clear to me before, but now? Please, promise me you won't take the law into your own hands. Can't promise that. I'd like to think we're not just vigilantes. But I'll give you my word, we won't. Sure, you can trust me. I give you my word. We'll right. let you know. Well, we In any out. case, keep me posted, will you? Friend, you can count on it. Take care, John. Thank you for giving always, me such vital Stranoff information. Stranoff given me new, potentially relevant information. Not to mention second thoughts. When an old dog like him gets that serious, one must be prepared to bite. All right, new clues allow new deductions. Three new deductions. What's on the signboard today? No, 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 no. I just want to see the signboard, not go inside. Just turned off the grill. You all got about 25 seconds to order your last burger before it goes cold, you bastards. Oh, you're the guy that almost ran me hey, over earlier. if it isn't, miss, I'm so sorry. Well, I'm sorry, too, because we ran out of sissy menu. Your dad and brothers ate them all. So, you got anything to say to Sam, little kitty? Try Mr. Eat My Fist, or I just wanted to get a friend a cheeseburger. I want a cheeseburger for a friend. One cheeseburger for your boyfriend. Coming right up. Come on, you bastards. Finish your meals and be gone. I'm closing in five. I don't know who we're giving a cheeseburger to, but sure. Last I checked, Mr. Goat was uh, still asleep. Unless we want to get the the chest expander from him. There you go. I have to admit, I was hoping to get something in return for that first hamburger. But now I just, I don't really know why I brought this. The cynics would say I did it all out of selfishness. Just to feel better about myself. Who cares? You're a good guy, Black Sad. You're a good guy. So I want to take that chest expander. Um, but it would only leave... Would only leave three rings around the neck? Not four? I thought it said four. Oh, maybe three rings and one rope? I don't know. Um, we have to do the deductions. That's right. Um, Dunn's weight. Dunn wanted to call off the fight. When Dunn died, his knuckles were swollen. I mean, he's a boxer, so... Mary has a cold. Let's go for, uh, there's something, but well, we can say 
According to Jake, Dunn had a strong argument with Yale while he was painting on the scaffolding. And uh, Dunn wanted to call off the fight. Those aren't related. Uh, it's got to have something to do with the new clues we learned. So when Dunn died, his knuckles were swollen. And there's something fishy about it? No. Uh, maybe the when Dunn died and then he had a fight with... Uh, there you go. And um, Dunn wanted to call off the fight? Nope. Is it about his weight and height? Is it about there's something fishy about the suicide? Come on, you gotta, you gotta be like, throw me a bone here. Um, the chest expander in the trash belongs, belongs to Yale. Come on now, come on. Um, it's new evidence we got. This is new evidence. Dunn's weight. But don't really know what that would have any, what that would do with anything. Um, well, that has something to do with it. Apparently, could he not reach the... Uh, hmm. He couldn't reach the uh, the rope because it was too tall. I'm much taller than done, and I can barely reach the noose. There's no way Dunn hanged himself. Not on his own, at least. All right, there's some more things I could deduce though. Let's uh, talk to Mr. Jake, though. No, I guess we're not talking to you, Jake. Alright, new deductions. Let's start piecing this stuff together. Um, someone threw a paint can in the trash. When Dunn dies, his knuckles were swollen, didn't he? Uh, Dunn had four different neck marks. There you go. And, uh, there's a chest expander. And the chest expander... He wasn't tall enough to hang himself. So he was strangled with the chest expander. Bobby Yale. I don't know if you had a motive to kill Dunn, but you certainly had the murder weapon. Dunn was strangled with the Yale's chest expander. The clues collected allow new deductions. We're just deducting it up. Just don't don't mind me, Jake. Keep hitting that bag. We'll just stand here with our hand on our chin. Weekly took very explicit photos of the rhino and his lover. Uh, okay. Um, Dunn had strong argument with Yale while he was painting on the scaffolding. Dunn was strangled with Yale's chest expander. Come on, those gotta be connected. Who did the footprints of the blonde? Um, Dunn wanted to call the fight. Mary has a cold. When Dunn died, his knuckles were swollen. We can't. We really can't do anything about the paint. Uh. Well, we know we got to keep using the new uh, new details. So Dunn was strangled with the L's chest expander. That's connected to Dunn wanted to call off a fight. Did we not already do this? We didn't already do this. Christ, did Yale kill Dunn just because he wanted to call off the fight? I always knew Bobby had issues. But I never thought he'd go that far. The evidence is stacking against him. It's too early to say. I don't think he did it. I mean, it, 
We don't have concrete evidence, but it's a little too early to say, but it's leading that way. I couldn't say. In my line of work, you really shouldn't jump to conclusions. But the chest expander, the box in his locker, the marks on my father's neck. It all leads to him. Someone else could have used it to frame him. Someone could have just used it because it was at hand. It didn't have to be In him. any case, that doesn't change a thing. We're still looking for it Bobby does, Yale. actually. Now we know he didn't kill himself. My father's still dead, and you still haven't found Bobby Yale. Hey, we're trying, okay? We're trying. Nothing has changed. Opening the safe and finding my father's will won't help us achieve anything. So please hurry. Time's wasting. Okay, I gotcha. Stop busting my chops here, lady. Do you know how many hamburgers I've Some given to homeless men? Never cease to amaze me. But most importantly, why was she so opposed to you? The answer is zero. I've given two cheeseburgers, zero hamburgers. John Blacksad? That's me. Who wants to know? I think I owe you an apology. Ah. Mr. O'Leary? Apology accepted. But what exactly are you apologizing for? <laughs> uh, listen, I don't think my fellow workers treated you with the respect you deserve. I'm so sorry they wrinkled your suit. The thing is, uh, they didn't know we shared a common goal. Uh, you're not Bobby supposed to park Yale. on the sidewalk, dude. I want to find him and get to the bottom of this as much as you do, Mr. Blacksad. So please, kindly accept my invitation. Why not share our findings? Come on. No deal. No deal. Not with your goons I'm threatening like this. I have to say no. I can't ride in a fancy car with a wrinkled suit. I don't see why not. In any case, if those little wrinkles make you uncomfortable. <laughs> I always play it nice and safe. Now you're going to threaten me, huh? The subtle threats didn't work, now the uh, overt threats have to happen. Well, at least we're not running around uh, the gym trying to figure out what we're doing. At least we're moving the story along a little bit. Thank you, Black Sad. You won't regret this. So let's cut to the chase. I need Bobby Yale to fight Stone. There's just too much money at stake. So I'm offering you my help to find Yale. You need me let's to find together. him so he can throw the fight. What kind of help do you need? I always work solo. I don't work with criminals. What kind of help are you talking about? What kind of help do you need? A simple exchange of information. You're a good detective. And I, well... Let's just say I have my own ways of making people talk. I mean, probably still no deal. I think I'll have to pass this time. What? What? Do my own ways scare you? Please, hear me out. Let's say I bet a beer that we find Yale in three days, and you bet a beer that we don't. In three days, one of us has to buy the other a beer. Is that so bad? We're simply two grown men using our money and free will to conduct a small private exchange. And most importantly, we're not hurting anyone. So, yeah, I run a gambling business. What's so bad about that? It's not the, it's not the gambling, it's the related things that's, uh... I mean, the gambling's not the problem. I can't really say. Well, I can. Nothing. But I'll tell you what is wrong. The way our government is ruining America. We live in a so-called free country. A place where honest people can make a living, provided they don't hurt anybody. We're not communists. Well, at least I'm not. I don't have a problem if you are. Otherwise. As for me... 
I'm no commie. I'm a sympathizer. It's none of your business. Um, we're not going to come out and say we're a communist. We're just going to... With all due respect, it's none of your business. Ooh, all right. Never mind then. In any case, that's not my point. The government betrays our nation's values by passing communist laws that forbid an honest man like me to make a living without hurting a soul. And that, Mr. Black said, is just wrong. I'd even say it's unconstitutional. Do you get my point now? Not really. No. That doesn't justify what you do. Gambling is also immoral. Fair enough. Okay. But that doesn't justify what you do for a living. Oh, boy. Did you hear anything I just said? Anyway, when the government passes these laws, there's only one legitimate weapon the people can wield. The same weapon that turned America into a great nation. Civil disobedience. So, as the proud American that I am, it's my duty to disobey. Civil disobedience does not tolerate your ways. You might have a point. You're bending the truth. I mean, you're bending the truth a little bit, sir. You're bending the truth to justify organized crime. Oh, no. It might have been organized crime, but not anymore. I wasn't always a boss, you know. No, sir. I started at the bottom when Lucky Blitzen ran the show. That good for nothing. His was a reign of terror, extortion, violence, you know, that sort of unpleasant thing. When I took over, I decided I'd make people want to do my bidding. Not out of fear, but out of gratitude. I decided to help people so they would help me. That beating your thugs gave me was really helpful. Thank you so much. Ah, ah, ah. Those poor bastards didn't even know you were a detective. That you were on our side. I told side. them I was a detective three you times. First. But when they tied me up and beat the socks off me, they knew very well who I was. Seriously? That goes against my rules. Who was it? Uh, the buffalo. Well, I mean, they both beat me, but, uh... Yeah, the two of them. Bastards. But don't you worry. I'll have a talk with those two. I cannot tolerate this behavior. Please, accept my apologies, Mr. Blacksad. You see, a lot of people work for me. Many families depend on my business. Not only that, St. Christopher's Hospice practically lives on my donations. The widows of my late employees are set for life. Their kids get free schooling. The cops leave me alone because they know my business doesn't hurt anyone. On the contrary. On the contrary, you're and, paying them. Ah, it looks like we're here. Where are we, sir? The reservoir where you're going to dump my body for not agreeing with you? Yale's apartment? <laughs> I told you, I'm on your side. Go ahead, search the place. I'll wait down here. When you're done, maybe you'll change your mind and share your findings with me. Maybe not. Or not. It's your call, Mr. Blacksad. I'll make sure you're suitably compensated. We're not doing it for Cobra. the money. Wilson! Oh, you're in trouble now, boys? I told on you, I snitched on you for beating me. All right, this probably would be a good time to end the episode, but we'll look some more. Bobby seems like a nice kid, but I I barely know him. Really? It seems like uh, mm. maybe you knew each other a little more. The worst thing about O'Leary's boys dropping by isn't the beating, but the fact that I can't tell what's theirs and what's Yale's. Can't say this is the ideal drink for an athlete. Then again... It could be your classic bookie thug lunch. I think I'm missing. No. Oh, new deductions. Before I do that, let's check this little uh, little cabinet here. La Fontaine today. 17th century French fables. There must be one boring old lady. Oh, I'll take that. 
I'll take that. Eden Woods, take you, sir. I mean, all of this for two two cards in a book. All right, let's do the uh, do the deductions. It's got to be something new. Um, Mary went to Luna Park with Yale. Mary has a cold. Mary, why were you going out with Yale when you were going to, uh... You were with, uh... Joey. Why were you with Yale? Uh... Oh, is it they were fighting over her? And not the fight? No. How oh, is his love? <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, is that? No. Is his lover Mary? Is that that girl in the picture? No. All right. Um. It's got to be something to do with Mary, and it's got to do something with uh, Mary having a cold. Is it the footprints? No? Okay, well, come on. You gotta throw me a bone here. There's only so many different combinations, <laughs> and we know it's the new things. We know it's Mary went to Luna Park, and we know if we choose like anything else that doesn't make sense, it just X's it out. So it's got to be Mary went with Luna Park, Lu went to Luna Park with Yale. Mary also has a cold. Um, we've tried the painting. We've tried the scaffolding. All right, let's let's just brute force this, <laughs> can we? Someone threw a paint can in the trash. There are very explicit photos. His knuckles were swollen. They had an argument. There's a paint stain. Well, uh, have we just exhausted all the possibilities? We have, so that doesn't make any sense. Um, so... It's got to be something about Mary and Yale. And that's just doing it the opposite way. What do you want from me, game? Alright, you know what? tired of looking at this let's just move on it says that there's deductions to be made but uh, I don't know what they are and it's wasting time it's not going that other room yet <sighs> dirty dishes gotcha um, there's something else back there though it's a uh, a card Anything in the fridge? Ah, uh, there's her scarf. I'm not sure how Yale's love of pickles will help me crack the case, but it's good to know. Hey, I mean, no one that loves pickles is a bad guy, right? A woman's fragrance. Almost angelical. 
There's a scarf at Yale's place. Mary Purnell's scarf is at Bobby Yale's place. We definitely can put some things together now. Yeah, new deductions, for sure. Um, Mary went to Luna Park with Yale. Uh, she also has a cold. And also, there's a scarf at Yale's place. That means she's been here recently, but why? What does Sweet Mary have to do with Yale, the murder suspect? Mary Purnell is lying about Yale. Mary's been at Yale's place recently. Mary Purnell and Bobby Yale killed Dunn? Alright, new deductions, huh? Um... They were having an argument, and Mary's been at Yale's place. Come on, that seems like something you'd have an argument about. Um, Weekly took the photos, and Mary's been at Yale's place. We Weekly took the photos, and there was an argument. All right, let's. There was an argument, and there's footprints. There was an argument, and there's paint on the floor. Oh. And, uh... And then the footprints? There was an argument. There's paint on the floor, but who threw the paint can away? And who do the footprints belong to? Come on, you had me going so far. Um... There's an argument. There's paint. Someone threw the paint can in the trash. Also, uh, his knuckles are swollen. That's somehow connected. Okay. Dunn must have punched the can while he was arguing with Yale. I guess that explains why he threatened to call the fight off. Dunn threw a can of paint in the dumpster. Any more, uh... No, there's nothing more. So, it said two, but I thought... That was only one. So, never mind. Um, I thought that we could make two deductions. I thought it said two, but we only made one deduction? Maybe we made two. What's in here? This is the restroom. A fairly large restroom for a New York City apartment. Judging by the general state of the apartment, they were leading a quiet life. Uh, I mean, there's nothing in here. There's just, I can walk into the bathroom for no good reason. Is that what this deal is? I can force myself farther into the corner. Come on, get out of the corner, Black Sad. Hey, right, come on. Keep going, dude. Like, he gets stuck on the wall sometimes, which is a little, a little annoying. Alright, let's go into your bedroom. I mean, you can't notice it, but I mean, it looks like someone's punched the wall right here, and we're not mentioning it. All right, what do we got at his desk? He's a painter. I'll take uh, Freddy Atiquatlak. Michelle so, Pacini. You like your mob stories, don't you, Bobby? The Sicilian capo. Seems like Bobby inherited something more than boxing skills from his father. Besides the tendency to vanish into thin air, of course. Nice chain. This is the book of his dad's poems. Avenarius Copy complete one poems. Of three. Do you know any of his relatives? Is his father ever, ever, Avenarius? 
Avenarius, the boxer poet? Didn't he disappear 20 years ago? What's going to be in this? Uh, oh, 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 hold on. I saw so collectible. Thank you. John James Carrup. There's going to be something in the wardrobe. Why would you want such a big closet for so few clothes? Typical bachelor pad. Someone took the clothes. I mean, it's not a bachelor pad. It's, it's looking... I don't know. Unless someone emptied it recently. Someone like Mary? Let's stay. Uh, I can leave and avoid O'Leary. Go out the window. And then I leave and I go go talk to O'Leary. Just want to just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's do a run through of the the apartment here real quick. Nothing in the bathroom. Nothing on those uh, pictures, right? Nope. All right, so let's go out the window. I mean, surely he'll be waiting for us. I mean, if he was a smart mafia man, he'd have the whole place staked out, including the fire escapes. But we're not dealing with the, uh, the mafia. With people like O'Leary, you just never know. I didn't want to put Mary at risk. Why not take her a little something instead? Like the scarf? I've never trusted angels. Mr. Black's hat? What a... Surprise. When they fall, they turn into demons. Joey told me he was going to spend the afternoon painting the gym and that Bobby would be fixing something up on the roof. So, after I found the body and called the police, I went to Bobby's place, but he wasn't there. How'd you open the door to his apartment? How did you open the door to his apartment? I think it was already open. Everything is so confusing. I'm sorry, Mr. Blacksad. Don't be. But you had the photo. I'm here to figure it all. So it's more you're more than just acquaintances. What's your relationship to Bobby Yale? What's your relationship with Bobby Yale? He was like a son to Joey, and we were about to get married, so you know. Okay. I think it's time to set things straight. Were you cheating on Dunn with Yale, or was it the other way around? You and Bobby Yale conspired against Dunn. No, let's just ask. I mean, we don't know if she's part of conspiracy. I knew you were cheating on Dunn with Yale. Or was it the other way around? No! How can you even think of something like that? How can you convince me otherwise? I found a picture at Yale's apartment. It's you and him on a roller coaster. Care okay. to explain, Miss Purnell? Yes. How do you I'm not that? white, Mr. Black said. What? Oh, you're you're passing. Seven of my great grandparents were white. The eighth was black. According to law, I'm a black citizen, even if my skin says the contrary. Do you know what that means when you're born in North Arlington, Alabama? Um, segregated everything. Segregated housing, with far worse homes for colored people. We even have different water fountains, for God's sake. The separate but equal doctrine and all that... That baloney, that crap, that garbage, that damn nonsense. That garbage. And all the lies. That's why I moved here. No one knows what color my great-grandparents were. You're not the only one I completely understand. Um... 
You're not the I'm only one. I'm black too, and I don't hide it. Well, at least you're a man. In any case, what's that have to do with Bobby Yale? He's my nephew, Mr. Black said. Excuse Joe and me? I first started taking care of poor Bobby when my oh. sister died. That was when he was almost 15. You mean like a... The three of us went on that trip to Luna Park. Theoretical nephew. So this is where Joe Dunn comes in. Bobby was the only one who knew about me and Joey. We were afraid that someone would use my past to ruin his career. It's or not the real, first time I hear that a, story. A real nephew then. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I accused you so lightly. Don't worry, I understand. Uh, let's see what what do we uh what do we got here? I, I was going to be ending the the episode, but like for real, you had to throw me this whole scene. TV and radio all in one. Where will these mad times lead us? Uh, much more, much more mad than uh, than that, Mr. Black's ad. Fresh out of the oven, the whole room smells like pie. I got one eyeball thing, and that's probably on her. Mary smells like... Oh, that's actually a smell. Actually, the whole room smells like a pie fresh out of the oven. So I can't identify any other fragrances. And then an eyeball. What am I eyeballing? Her hands? Her bag? Femininity Starts at Home by Belinda S. Loveless. All right, that cherry pie sure smells good. Are you sure you don't know Yale's whereabouts? About Sonya Dunn and the ring. Um, let's just, let's just compliment that her pie. That cherry pie smells so good. I'm starting to get hungry. Thanks. I pulled it out of the oven right before you arrived. Oh, where are my manners? I'm the worst hostess in the world. Let me go get a knife from the kitchen. Please don't stab me. And you must be thirsty. Uh, let me see. OJ? Coffee? Uh, just water, please. Water's good, thanks. I'll take that, uh, collectible out of your bag, if you don't mind. She's wearing the same clothes in both pictures. So she's probably telling the truth. Is she gonna be murdered in here? Has she run away? Has she just peaced out? Oh, we were looking in a separate room. Uh, got some real beautiful artwork. I was gonna help you with that. I need to stretch out. I was gonna help you with that. Sorry, I was gonna help you with that. Nah, we were we were peeking. She knows we were peeking. How much how much pie are you going to eat, sir? Go eat the whole entire pie? You should open a bakery about Sonya and the Ring. There's a queen size bed in the bedroom. I mean, come on now. Let's not talk about her bed. Unless we're talking about Joe Dunn's. Or, I mean, hey, Yale's bed. Uh, <laughs> but. You should open a bakery and sell these pies. <laughs> Thanks. Joey used to say the same thing. Uh, is there anything more we can detect from our senses? We can sniff two more things. We can sniff her face. Now that there's almost no pie left, the scent has also disappeared. That's why you ate the whole pie? Now Mary smells like a huge dog. Mary, 
When are you going to stop lying? I know your nephew is here. I can smell him. What? No. I already told you I don't know where he is. Look, I understand your motives. Look, I understand why you're protecting him. But it's in his best interest to end this hide and seek. You can search the whole house if you want. Go ahead. He's not here. Uh oh. What's with this music? If he's making you cover for him, I'll protect you. Where did he go? Let's let's see if we can sniff out anything first. Two more sniffs. Wait a minute. She's not the one who smells like that. Well then, who smells like that? Someone outside? Where's the sniffs coming from? To the right. Okay. Ah, uh, underneath the cushions? That's where Bobby Yale's scent is coming from. So, that's where you were sitting there. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. Could you step aside so I can check, please? Uh, oh, there's please a go. knife. Mary, for Christ's sake, put that knife down, would you? Leave or I'll... You don't have to do this, Mary. Please calm down. I just want to help. Look, I just want to help, Mary. Mary, I came here to help. I mean uh, it. I don't want to hurt you. Leave her alone! Oh, someone's going to get stabbed. Bobby! Oh! oh. Grab the tray! Grab the tray! <laughs> And beat him over the head, please. Ah! Ow! Well, we failed. Uh, I thought I hit up, but I might have hit more left than up. I'm gonna kill you! Look, I'm on your side! I'm on your side, Bobby. But I'm not on yours! Ouch! Oh, he's having a heart attack. Oh, the man's dead. Oh, he's dead now. He's dead. Bobby! Give the man CPR. Call chest compressions. Ambulance. Chest compressions. Do chest compressions. Said. Go on, call an ambulance. Do it now. In the Ch face of a heart attack, there's two things you can't forget. Chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. One, stay calm. Two, one chest compression per second. One Mississippi. Oh. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Six Mississippi. Seven Mississippi. Well. Eight Mississippi. Bobby. Oh, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Thank you. Well, we didn't kill him. I had lots of reasons to consider this a great day. I had investigated a suicide case. I had discovered that, in truth, we were dealing with a murder. I had found and captured the prime suspect. And I had saved a life. <laughs> yeah, we almost didn't because we failed. We timed those pretty poorly. And yet, 
everything in me screamed that something was going wrong. Terribly wrong. All right, we're definitely into the episode now, as soon as we get the chance. Promise me, Promise you me. won't take the law into your own hands. I'd like to think I'd we're like not just vigilantes. I want a gun! What the hell? Bang, bang, bang! bang, 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 bang. A fair amount of violence, extortion, and casualty. I hate, I hate detectives. detectives. I guess we're at the hospital. Bang, bang, bang. You're dead to me, cat. That you, Smirnoff? You seem agitated. Nightmare? <sighs> well, I guess we're not going to end the episode while we're doing this. Um, never mind. What's it to you? Yeah, I have a lot of these. Have I been sleeping long? I've been out. How long have I been sleeping? I just got here. Anyway, why don't you go home? In his current condition, Yale's not going anywhere. Besides, we'll take it from here. Yale hospitalized under police custody. I can watch Yale on my own. Can we trust that guy? Thanks, I need to rest. Who is that? Can we trust him? I know how to pick my men, John. You? I'm not so sure. You promised me you wouldn't intervene. I didn't intervene. I just went to go talk to this lady. I shouldn't have made any promises. I saved someone's life. I didn't make any promises. I had to. If I hadn't intervened, Bobby Yale could be dead. If you had warned me, maybe we could have avoided a heart attack. I didn't know he was there. Anyway, what's done is done. Like, I just went to have a chat with a friend, and he popped out and attacked me. I don't call that being a vigilante, honestly. When... when exactly did you realize that he killed Dunn? Still don't know he did, honestly. Out of sheer curiosity, I'm a cop after all. When I discovered the murder weapon was his, when he tried to kill me, when I saw the picture of Luna Park, I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not so sure Yale killed anyone. How about the motive? Any ideas? Dunn didn't want to call us. Dunn wanted to call his fight off. Yale was in a street gang. I'm not sure. Yale's dad disappeared. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I've got several theories, but that's about it. In any case. Hopefully Yale will tell us more. Would you let me ask him some questions when he wakes up? I know you will, with or without my permission. So, I'd rather not feel betrayed. In exchange, drop by the station when you can. Your investigation could really help my men. Who, by the way, must be waiting for me to interrogate Mary Purnell. Boy, she was hard to pry from Yale's side. Don't go too soft on her, she's a liar. Be nice to her, man. She's been through a lot in the past days. Be nice to her. Of course. In spite of it all, we're not just vigilantes. And as for you, go get some rest. God knows you need it. Sleeping won't help. I will. We'll see. I can't promise anything. Tell the nurses to look at that face of yours. You look like a film detective in his last scene. I'm afraid this film isn't over yet. For your sake, I hope you're wrong. You're in charge now, officer. Okay. I'll send you relief in six hours, understood? Doctor. Who are... Oh, detective. Congratulations. You fared pretty well against that kid. Better than most would have. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me... Uh... I got lucky. Let's just say I got lucky. 
Oh, what do we find? I'm like, I can never end this episode. We, as a society, simply don't trust reptiles. But that's not the real problem. The real problem is our extended belief that there's logic to that distrust. That it's natural and well-founded. Dr. Palmer. How's Yale? Is he awake? Oh yeah. Go check on him before he falls asleep again. Although, try not to bother him with too many questions. Uh... What's his current condition? What's his current condition? Um, it's too soon to tell. He did have a heart attack after all. Dr. Palmer suggests that Yale rest after his heart attack. All right, can can we can we get to a part where I can just walk around and then feel Go away. I don't want to see you. Okay, the I guess we're continuing to sleep. I rarely get to interrogate a suspect with his guard down in a place as quiet as this. Getting the chance to study his body language with no distractions is a rare gift. Alright, I guess this episode is going to be super long. He's looking straight at me. If he couldn't hold my stare, I'd think he's lying. But that's not the case. His heart rate is increasing. It could mean that he's lying. But it could also just be pure, unadulterated rage. He's clenching his fist. A sign of contained anger. Clenched fist. Fast heart rate. Fixed stare. He feels some genuine rage towards me. I'm sorry you don't want to see me, but... Um, I did save your life, sir. I saved your life, son. Maybe my aunt feels gratitude. I certainly don't. Luckily, I just got my medication. I'll be snoozing soon. All right, I'll just cut to the chase. Why'd you kill Dunn? Who killed Dunn? I mean, let's go back for more, uh, more sense. Is he lying? Or did his heart rate speed up out of rage? Is this, these are the same things we already saw, right? Is he holding back his rage? He can't look me in the eye. I'd say he's lying. Who killed Joe Dunn? What? Are you trying to confuse me? Joe hanged himself. It's not true. Okay, there's no... There's none of those. Dunn wanted to call off a fight. Dunn was too short to hang himself. The murder weapon was yours. Dunn was too short to hang Dunn himself. Dunn was too short to hang himself with that rope. So... It's true? He was murdered. Well, what about Dunn wanting to call off that fight? What was that argument about? I know about? Dunn threatened to call off the fight. Why? How do you know that? I'm a detective. That was his anger talking. He never really meant it. That doesn't matter. Why was he so mad at you? What did you do? Nothing. Joe thought that I wasn't training hard enough. That I was going to lose. All right. Let's just say that I... I believe you. The murderer killed Dunn with a chest expander and planted evidence to make us believe it was suicide. But he also left enough clues behind to make sure we found the true murder weapon. Then he put the chest expander box in your locker to frame you. Do you know anyone that twisted and who also happens to have a mo- I... I don't know. Uh... Desmond O'Leary, Jake 
Sonya Dunn, uh, Frank Cassidy. I mean, O'Leary seems to be involved in this pretty heavily. Desmond O'Leary certainly seems twisted enough. Did he have anything against Dunn? I'm not sure if they knew each other. At least not in person. About a month ago, Joe kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym. He was trying to give a business card to... Jake was the army. Yeah, exactly. Did Jake tell you about that? Something like that. What about Cassidy, the, the boxing about operation Cassidy? guy? Do you think he has a motive? Maybe. A few weeks ago, Joe took me to a boxing manager's association meeting. Headed by Cassidy. Yeah. He was obsessed with making it illegal for boxers to fight without a manager. Or without an associated manager. Everyone seemed to go along with it until Joe spoke up. He said that would lower us to mob status. That Cassidy had founded the association just to make money by monopolizing the sport. That made others think twice. And Cassidy ended up empty-handed. That sounds Poor like motive. Cassidy. What about Jake? You think Jake had anything to do with it? Maybe it was... What am I saying? Jake could never pull off something like that. <laughs> Nothing. <Never laughs> so you're saying he's too dumb to set it up? What about his own daughter? What about Sonya Dunn? Sonya? I doubt it. She's odd. But she's his daughter. I've seen worse. Believe me. Black Sad. I think I owe you an, uh, uh... You know, my father disappeared when I was six. Right after winning a fight. We never heard from him again. Do you know what that does to a kid? Who knows where I'd be if Joe Dunn hadn't been in my life. Even when I lost my way and put a gun to his head years later, he still took me under his wing and managed to steer me in the right direction. And now that he's gone, you're risking your life to find his murderer. That's right. I sure am. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. It's about time. I'm just doing my job. You're welcome, Jake. Er, not Jake. Bobby. You're welcome. Oh, he's asleep. All right, let's get that. Uh, let's get this card here. Let's let's get this card here. Like, I need the game to save so I can quit, but the game's not gonna save. So. The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. Out of cigarettes? Alright, I, I swear I'm gonna end this as soon as the save option comes up. I swear. The hands say a lot about what's going on inside a person. Is that eye movement normal? Is it REM sleep? Then yes, it's normal. What are you pointing me at, thing? Is that eye movement normal? Yeah, yeah, I know. Just be hearing something? What am I hearing? I don't want to talk about the eye movement anymore. I'm talking about the hearing. There's one more thing I can hear? Not the fist. What what is left? What is left to find? Oh the heart. I gotcha. That all that just to he hear seems the heart. Restless. Should I tell someone? Probably. Uh, what about the boots? So that's the, the the nurse call sign or the nurse call button. I need to look at those boots first. Boots? Do they match the uh, footprints in the Ugh. in the paint? No paint.
Yale's shoes smell like a dead man? Well, new deduction. Well, we'll do the new deduction later. We're not, we're not padding this episode out anymore. Press the button, dude. See? There's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. No, I have nightmares too, lady. I have lady. nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh. Good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know and, and, and for bringing him in. You're welcome, madam. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but... I need to take a look at his medical report. There you go. There's the save icon. All right. So now we're definitely ending the episode here. So thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again next time.